very much for kind introduction. So first of all, I'm so honored to have this chance to talk here. And taking advantage of this opportunity, I'd like to appreciate the uh, organizers, especially Professor Sakaguchi for kind invitation. So today I'd like to give you a talk about uh, crack problems in elasticity from viewpoints of both sides of direct problem and inverse problem. Uh, this is the plan of my talk. I will divide today's talk into four parts. First, I will mention about motivation of these studies briefly. And next, uh, we consider the inverse crack problems, both in the case of single crack and multiple cracks. And uh, as uh, Professor Ikehata mentioned uh, uh, in previous talk, uh, so we also use the enclosure method. And next, we consider uh, crack problems in nonlinear elasticity. And this is a further problem. So I will explain about the nonlinear elastic model behind this problem and discuss with about existence of the solution. And lastly, we will mention the future works and ongoing work. OK, let's start with motivation of this research. Uh, my research topic is about fracture, uh, mathematical analysis on fracture phenomena, which is related to with earthquakes. It's very important issue, in, especially in Japan. Uh, from mathematical point of view, the uh, difficulty is, is uh, that the domain has discontinuity, such as cracks, and the solution of governing application has singularity there. So uh, it's very important to analyze the precise behavior of the solution near singular point. As one of application of these kind of studies, in collaboration with Professor Ikehata, I consider the theoretical study for non-destructive evaluation, that is, inverse problems. So uh, non-destructive non evaluation is very important technique in gathering information about unknown defects, uh, such as uh, cavities or cracks, or some inclusions embedded in the body, uh, so that the test object is not destroyed. So practically, so applying some kind of stimulus, like a pressure, radiation, ultrasonic, electric pressure to the body, and observe the reaction. The problem is to uh, find the information about unknown defects uh, from the boundary, observe the data. So today, I'd like to give, uh, consider the uh, impact crack problems. Uh, this is a kind of uh, non-destructive non evaluation problem. So firstly, we treat is the case of a single crack. Let capital omega be a bounded domain in R2 with Lipschitz boundary. Uh, this represents a homogeneous isotropic linearized elastic plate. Uh, let capital D be an unknown linear crack denoted by capital PQ. And we assumed uh, one of tip P is known and located on the boundary. And another tip Q is unknown, uh, located somewhere uh, in omega, like this figure. Uh, applying the surface force on the boundary of omega and observe the corresponding data on the boundary of omega, our problem is to find the location of the point Q from this boundary data. Uh, today, I will talk about the, in the, only in the case of isotropic material, but uh, uh, this result can be uh, it's already extended to the case of anisotropic material in this paper. So in, in order to describe uh, as this problem to uh, inverse boundary value problem, uh, I'd like to introduce the linear, linearized elasticity equation called the Navier's equation or Ramet system. In a stationary case in two dimension, uh, it can be the system of the second order linear elliptic equation for the displacement vector u in this way, denoted by capital AU equals to zero. Uh, in two dimensional uh, body, we can consider two states, which are the state of a plane stress and the state of a plane strain. Uh, in the homogeneous isotropic body, 
the difference between two states appears only the uh, quotient indication like this. Uh, here, capital E is uh, Young's modulus of the material, and nu is Poisson's ratio. From physical reason, this satisfies these conditions. And we define the another material constant kappa by this form. We denote uh, the boundary stress operator by capital T, and sigma is the st stress tensor. Then uh, the stress vector on the boundary is described as capital TU or sigma N, like this, where N is the unit outward normal to the boundary of this domain. And corresponding to the forward problem is as follows. For given surface force G in L2 of boundary of omega, uh, the displacement vector U, we find the U satisfying the problem starts of one. The first equation is linearized elasticity equation. On the crack faces, we assume the free traction condition. On the boundary of omega, uh, surface force G is applied. The key issues in the forward problem is the behavior of the solution near the crack tip. For this, we already have this formula. Uh, in the polar coordinated system, uh, R and theta with respect to the origin of the crack tip Q, the displacement field uh, can be expanded by this series. The important thing is the power exponent to the R, uh, it, which is called the uh, a singularity exponent, in this case it becomes n over 2. And we also have the explicit form of the function of theta, uh, like this. And uh, we can uh, show the exist, uh, convergence of the, this series and also the estimate of the questions. And uh, next, uh, in order to solve the inverse problem, we employ the enclosure method, which is uh, originally proposed by Professor Ikehata in the late of 20th century. So in this method, we pre prepare the following three functions. Uh, let uh, S1 be the, the unit circle. Then we define the support function of D by this form. From these definitions, for fixed direction vector omega, uh, one can see the line x dot omega equals to h sub d omega pass through the uh, tips of cracks, capital P or Q. And next, we introduce a special solution of the Navier's equation in the whole space uh, in this form. This is like a CG, uh, CGO solution. Uh, Professor Sitani's lectures already appeared in this kind of solution with positive parameter tau and the actual vector omega. Uh, uh, this is exponential type of solution and divides into two parts, uh, divides the whole space into two parts. The first part is the, uh, for, for direction vector omega, uh, the first part is the left side of the line, x dot omega equals to zero, zero. Oh, in this area, the absolute value of this function uh, uh, decays exponentially. And the another part is the right side of this line. Uh, in this area, the, this function grows up. And next, we e, define the indicator function. Let you be a weak solution of the problem star sub 1. And we define the uh, indicator function I sub omega of tau t by this form for positive parameter tau and the real parameter t. The function b, b is given, uh, defined as above. So oh, the, uh, for, for direction vector omega, the value of indicator function is obtained from the boundary data uh, g and u on the boundary of omega. Then uh, we have the first theorem. Uh, let u be not rigid displacement. Uh, this displacement means in 
this form uh, are described as f of x k uh, in this form for orbitary constant vector k. Uh, this implies uh, that the deformation of rotation and translation in two dimensions. And we, moreover, we assumed some regularity assumption for domain omega and uh, applying surface force g. This is just a technical assumption, so I mean that it's possible to weaken the slightly. But the essential assumption is that the G is well-controlled traction. The, the, the definition of it is as follows. Uh, there exists non-trivial constant vector K such that this holds. Uh, here, the round, sub, uh, round omega sub plus is uh, the part of the boundary of omega uh, divided by the, uh, the extension of D, like this figure. So, in fact, uh, I don't know physical meaning of these assumptions, but we can give uh, some examples of the well-controlled fractions independent of D. Uh, one example is the uniform load on the boundary, whole boundary of omega. Under these assumptions, we have the following formula. For, this formula says that uh, the for orbitary direction vector omega, not perpendicular to D, the value of, indicate, uh, value of support function is uh, obtained from the value of indicator functions. Uh, this is given from the boundary data. Moreover, we uh, know the following things. Uh, for fixed uh, direction vector omega, we draw a line x dot omega equals to t. Then we move to t. If t is greater than s sub d of omega, which means the line does not touch the d, like this figure, then indicator function decays ex exponentially as tau tends to infinity. Then we move to t a little bit smaller. Uh, if t is equals to h sub d of omega, which means the line just touched uh, point q, like this figure, then indicator function decays algebraically. And if t is smaller than h sub d of omega, which means the line uh, passes through the inside of the t, like this figure, then indicator function blows up as tau tends to infinity. So the enclosure method uh, can give us the information uh, uh, of the point Q by using the difference of asymptotic behavior of the indicator function. So next, uh, we briefly mentioned about the proof of this theorem. So in order to get the formula in this uh, theorem, uh, it's, one can say that it's enough to prove the following key lemma. Moreover, if the behavior of this function is truly algebraic, uh, key lemma automatically follows. And the reason, uh, and next we explain the reason uh, that uh, the key lemma follow, uh, leads to theorem. The first from the definition of the indicator function, this identity holds. And substituting t with zero, we have this form. And taking uh, absolute value on both sides of this and uh, logarithm on both sides of this and divided by tau, then we have this equation. So as when tau goes to infinity, the second term of the right-hand side vanishes because of e lemma. So then we get to this form. And Moreover, the proof of key lemma, the outline of the proof of key lemma is as follows. And first, from the definition of the indicator functions, uh, this uh, can be expressed uh, by the integral on the, uh, uh, on the crack faces by using the integrating by parts. And also, oh, from simple considerations, uh, this function can be divided into two parts. The one part is uh, decays exponentially as tau tends to infinity. 
And another part is expressed by the integral on D near the crack tip. As you, could, as you can see from this, so in order to know the asymptotic behavior of these functions, it's very important to know the uh, asymptotic behavior of the displacement field near the crack tip. So we already have uh, this fo uh, formula in what I mentioned a little while ago. So this formula put into here, so we have a complete asymptotic expansion of these functions. And finally, by using the assumption of well-controlled tractions, uh, we can see the, this function decays truly algebraically as tau tends to infinity. Next, uh, we move to the case of multiple cracks. For this problem, so we formulate by using the EIT, electric impedance tomography. Uh, Professor Siltan explained uh, yesterday's talk. Uh, so, so now we, we consider the domain omega is a rectangular domain, 0a times 0b, like this figure. This represented uh, uh, welded two plates, two metallic plates, omega plus and omega minus, which are electrically conductive. And, uh, we assume that both have the same constant conduct conductivity. Uh, this is not elasticity. And uh, let C be a position of the interface of two plates. And on the interface, uh, the blackout part in this figure is indicated the uh, welded part. This is uh, uh, denoted by capital W. And, uh, uh, this area is a bit uh, electrically conductive when the electric current flows through the body. And, the, uh, and the, on the interface, without the part, welded part, the white, white part is caused by uh, sigma. This is just a crack. It broke electricity. So now we denote the the tip of cracks by C sub 0, C sub 1, C sub 2, C sub 3, C sub 2, M plus 1, uh, starting from the left, like this figure. So, uh, now, now uh, the, so our problem is to, uh, to find, uh, uh, to reconstruct the, the uh, crack sigma by using the boundary data. So now, uh, next we explain the corresponding forward problem. Let's apply the uh, electric current density G, whose support is uh, the part of upper side of the omega, and satisfy this condition. <laughs> then we find uh, the potential of the electric field U, satisfying the star sub 2. The, because we assume the uh, two plates have the same constant conductivity, you should, should satisfy the Laplace equation. And on the crack faces, uh, normal derivative of U equals to zero. On the boundary of omega, electric current density G is applied. And you satisfy this condition. This is direct problem. So for inverse problem is the, the, uh, uh, the reconstruct uh, sigma from the uh, boundary data G and voltage U on the boundary of, omega, boundary of omega. For this inverse problem, so we also apply the enclosure method. So in this case, uh, we take the special solution of the Laplace equation uh, as this form. This is also C0 solution. And uh, as the indicator function, we define the I of tau omega like this. However, in this case, we can see the following thing. For orbitary t, uh, strictly less than its uh, support function of sigma, and for orbitary direction vector omega, this function always blows up as tau tends to infinity. Since this inequality falls, the usual enclosure method is not available. Uh, 
I mean, the original enclosure method can give us the only the information of the convex hull of the obstacles. So in this case, convex hull of sigma is just lying on the interface of two plates. So one cannot recover the, any information inside of the inside interior crack tips of sigma. So then, one of the idea of the, to overcome that point. Uh, we apply the Kelvin transform to the uh, CGO solution. Uh, the idea of making use of uh, Kelvin transform is uh, already applied to in the uh, probe method by Professor Ikehata around 2005 or something. But uh, maybe so it is for first attempt to apply the enclosure method. So now we apply the Kelvin transform to these functions. So now we, we fix the direction vector omega 0 minus 1. And then we define the new function v sub tau of yx by this form, where the e sub 1, e sub 2 are usual uh, unit, to, fundamental unit vector. So note here that the uh, harmonicity is invariant through the Kelvin transform. So we have this equation. This function is also satisfies Laplace equation. Moreover, let S be a positive and write uh, e to the minus tau over 2s with b tau is expressed by this form. Uh, since the real part of the phase function is given by this, so we see the following things. For fix the point x, uh, then if the point Y is outside of the circle uh, with centered X minus S E sub 2 and radius S, then this function decays exponentially because there is minus signs here. And if the point Y is uh, inside of the circle, then this function blows up as tau tends to infinity. And if the point Y is just on the circle, it means uh, the real part of the phase function vanishes. So this function is highly oscillating as tau tends to infinity. The, so the point is that uh, we can construct the harmonic function which uh, behaves different whether the point y is inside of the circle or not. So now we redefine the indicator function uh, by replacing the beta with the Kelvin transformed one and integrating with respect to the variable y, so we have new indicator function, i of tau x. Then we have the following theory. Let u be the solution of the problem star sub 2 for applying electric current density g, which satisfies these conditions. And now we take the uh, epsilon a positive epsilon arbitrarily and set a sub zero by this. And let x, let x moves on this line. Then if the point x is equal to cj b plus epsilon for some j, then indicator function decays algebraically. And in fact, the decaying order is corresponding to the, uh, the single exponent to the of the so solution of, of near the practice. And if the point x is not CJB plus epsilon for any j, then indicate the function exponentially decays as tau tends to infinity. So by using this theorem, we can reconstruct all points, all uh, tip of cracks CJ uh, from the boundary data provided C is known, and also S0 is also known. So next, please take a look of this figure. This is a sketch for the procedure to reconstruct the CJ. The first, we apply the electric current density G, whose support is the upper side of the domain, and measure the corresponding voltage data on the boundary of omega. So, so I'd like to emphasize here is that uh, the, we only use the single measurements. 
And so for, for, uh, for from the boundary data, we can calculate the value of indicator function for each x. Next, we take the uh, positive epsilon arbitrarily, and we draw a line, b plus epsilon, like this. Then, uh, next, uh, for each x on this line, we draw a circle with radius s sub zero, like this here, and moves, moves x on this line. If the point x is uh, uh, located above interior point sigma or w, like uh, green circles in this figure, then indicate a function exponentially decaying from the second assertion in the theorem B. And if the point X is just located above the CJ, like red circle in this figure, then indicate a function decays algebraic. So by using the difference of asymptotic behavior of indicator function, we can reconstruct uh, CJ from single measure. So, and this is a, so just one remark, but very important. And one of the advantages of our method is that it's possible to take observation data smaller than the whole boundary of omega. Uh, precisely, let delta be positive and define the new indicator function I sub delta of tau x by this form, where round omega sub delta is defined by this, indicated by brown line in this figure. So then it's easy to see that these two functions are equivalent in the sense of modular exponential decaying at tau tends to infinity. Therefore, theorem, theorem three also holds if i is replaced with i sub delta. So I mean, the, at least the, the boundary data on the lower side of the uh, boundary is unnecessary in this case. Okay, next, let's move to completely another uh, topics, that is, crack problems in nonlinear elasticity. This is just a word problem. So, uh, what I mentioned uh, in introduction, so fraction phenomena is very important, especially in Japan. And also, and the theoretical studies are also advanced in the geophysics and the engineering. But uh, the most of the studies are supported by brittle fracture which is based on the linear elastic theory. So today I'd like to start to rem remind the, the linear elastic model. So according to continuum mechanics, the fundamental equation is derived from the conservation laws. This is a continuity equation uh, comes from the conservation law of mass, and this is the equilibrium equation from the conservation law of, of momentum. And here, rho is density of the material, and B is the velocity vector, which is a time derivative of the displacement vector, and sigma is called the Cauchy stress tensor, and F is body force. When we consider the linear elasticity model, linear elastic model, uh, we should note that the following things as underlying assumptions. So first, we assumed uh, strain is very small. So in this case, it's, uh, it's very good for mathematics because it's treated easily. Because uh, we, need, we need not care about the configuration after and before deformation. So, and also, the definition of the stress tensor and the strain tensor are unified in this case. So we define the linearized string in of u by this form. And the next uh, constitutive law, which means the relation between the stress and the string, is linear. So where the capital C is a force on the tens tensor uh, called the elastic tensor. One can say this is the extension of the Fuchs law to 
three dimension. And then next, due to infinitesimal strain, one can uh, we we can think that the density change is also small. I mean the density law is a constant law sub zero plus a small perturbation. So in this case, so in the equilibrium equation, we think we can think the density law is constant law sub zero. So we need not to solve the two equations at the same time. So the, the continuity equation is used for finding the low prime. And lastly, uh, we assume the u, b, and the acceleration are also small. Then the material derivatives appears in two equations uh, become the usual time derivative. Then the equilibrium equation can be reduced to the so-called linear elasticity equation. So in fact, uh, mentioned uh, in the first part of my talks, uh, we already introduced the stationary case without any body forces in two dimension, like this equation. But for the crack problem, we assumed on the crack phases free traction conditions. Then one can see the asymptotic behavior of the stress field becomes this. This means the uh, st stress concentration occurs at near the crack tip. This is a very important issue in the fracture mechanics. And also the coefficient of this term is called the stress intensity factor. This is also very important. Uh, however, so, so in the linear model, because the st stress and strain relation is linear, so this means the strain is also concentrated at the crack tip. But this is a contradiction to assumption if it is much strain. So my collaborator, Professor Rajakopal, pointed out this inconsistency from 10 years ago and proposed by new concept of the elastic material, like implicit constant theory and strain limiting model. And one of the conventional elastic model is called Cauchy elasticity. This is described as this equation. The Cauchy stress tensor is, is a function of deformation gradient, capital F. This is like a strain. So of course, the linear elastic model is in this category. And Professor Rajakopal uh, proposed a more general uh, concept uh, called implicit constitutive theory. Uh, for simplicity, in in the isotropic material case, uh, this is described as uh, F is a function of sigma and Cauchy stretch, Cauchy green stretch tensor B equals to zero. This is implicit form. From the principle of the frame indifference, uh, function F should satisfy this equation for orbitally orthogonal tensor capital Q. Uh, from this equation, we have the explicit form of function f as follows. Here, the const, uh, coefficient alpha sub i depends upon the density law and these invariants. The one of the uh, subclass of this uh, formula is like this. So, Cauchy green stress tensor E is a function of nonlinear function of and now we assume the infinitesimal strain, then the function P it can be uh, approximated by the linearized strain like this. Then we have this form. And after uh, some dynamic discussions, we have the one of the typical form like this. Then uh, this is called the strain limiting model. So one of example of this model is like this. So main feature of this model is that we assume the strain is very small, but we don't require any constraints for sigma. So the sigma. For example, in one dimensional case, uh, the sigma can be infinity 
even while the string is bounded in this model. So today, I'd like to consider the crack problems in this model. Let uh, capital omega uh, be a bounded domain uh, with Lipschitz boundary. Uh, D is uh, dimension two or three. And the boundary omega uh, consist, consists of two parts, gamma sub n and gamma sub d, which are disjoint. And gamma sub d is not empty set. And gamma sub c is a subset of omega, uh, which is a d minus one dimension oriented Lipschitz manifold. Uh, that is a crack embedded in the body, like this figure. And we use uh, the notation omega sub c by this, and n is the normal vector on the boundary of omega and gamma sub c. So now we consider the following boundary value problem. That is nonlinear problem with limiting small strain for crack, sub crack subject to non-penetration. Given body force f and surface force g, applied on gamma sub n, and function psi. Uh, then we, our problem is to find the displacement vector u and, uh, in H1 and the linearized strain in Lp prime and the stress tensor sigma in Lp with uh, uh, conjugate exponents p and p prime, uh, satisfying the star sub 3. First equation is the equilibrium equation in the stationary case. And the second equation is the constitutive law between the strain and the stress. So in this case, the linearized strain is a nonlinear function of stress. And on gamma sub t, the degree zero condition is imposed. And on gamma sub n, uh, surface force g is applied. On the crack faces, we assume the non-penetration condition which means it does not allow the penetrate uh, crack faces each other. So this means, the, uh, so this inequality means the crack faces uh, will open or bonded, not penetrate. <coughs> this is very uh, uh, suitable physical conditions. And uh, other auxiliary uh, uh, conditions uh, is, uh, are like uh, free traction conditions. So this equation means uh, zero friction. And the double blankets is denoted by the jump of the quantity like this. And the next, uh, the weak form of the, this problem is as follows. Uh, this is a variation and inequality. So double dot denotes the scalar product of the matrix and center dot is the usual inner product. So in the constitutive law, we adopt the strain derivative model in what I mentioned a little while ago. But technical reason, the first term is omitted today. So we only consider the second term with a positive constant mu kappa and s. Next we discuss about the existence of the solution. As preliminaries, one can see the function psi has the following properties. One is, this is strictly monotone and continuous. Uh, that is, this inequality holds for orbitally symmetric tensor sigma one and sigma two. And also sigma is uniformly bounded. So even if the stress can be infinity. And also, this is coercive, that is, this inequality holds. And here, C, the uh, question C sub S is defined by this. From this lemma, we have the following proposition. So the stress tensor sigma in the nonlinear crop problem one is unique, and the following a priori estimate holds where this denotes the house of measure of omega, and the positive constant C sub kp is appeared in the Cauchy Poincaré inequality. And from this, uh, and the uniqueness of the stress is derived from the strictly monotonicity of the side. 
And uh, as you can see from this uh, inequality, so uh, one can see the main difficulty. The main difficulty is the uh, stress sigma is uh, estimated only by the L1 space. This is non-reflexive and not weakly compact. Therefore, we cannot apply the usual method to show the existence of the solution. And moreover, uh, some mathematical tools for uh, regularity tools is, are not available in, to, this, to this problem because uh, uh, omega is cracked domain, so not non-convex, and also gamma equation, the system equation. So we need to regularize this problem. So we use the elliptic regularization for the governing equation and the constitutive law. And also we employ the penalization for the unilateral constraint. For fixed regularization parameter epsilon, uh, we consider the following regularized problem. So especially, we consider the red terms additionally. For this problem, we can apply the uh, standard method that is the browder minty theorem. So we can see the, the unique existence of the solution of this problem. And also, we have the uh, a priori estimate, uh, which is uniform with respect to the epsilon. Then we, we, we have the following theorem. We define the generalized solution, which means the, which is determined as the weak accumulation point of the solution of the regularized problem two as epsilon tends to zero. In, in this, so solution u is in H1 and E of u in L2, but sigma in M1, this is a space of bounded measure which is the dual of the continuous function of the con uh, compact supports denoted by C sub C. So, and we can see the general solution have the following problem, uh, satisfies the problem three. Uh, here the integral, this integral denotes the, the duality uh, between the M1 and C sub C. This is also. And this problem is different from the original problem one. However, if the regularity of the general solution is gained, uh, precisely the P is strictly bigger than one, then uh, general solution turns to the weak solution of the original problem. This is the result. And the next uh, five minutes. So it's possible to extend this result. So original constitutive law is this equation. But uh, today we omit this term because uh, this term violates the uh, monotonicity. Uh, however, so not only this forms, we, uh, our method is only required three conditions, uniform boundedness and the monotonicity and the continuous and this inequality corresponding to coercivity. So not only this form. So we can find another form of the psi satisfying these conditions. Going back to the derivation of this model, one of the typical model is like this. So, but in this case, the first term is only depend on trace of sigma. So in this form, so we have the theorem eight. Let psi sub one and two be continuous and almost everywhere differentiable, and there exist constants such that this inequality holds. This is for psi one, and this is for psi two. And the two cases are allowing switching either this one or this one, or at sub, sub interval of R plus. For, for this, under these assumptions, so one can see the, this psi in the form four, or this condition, satisfy this condition. 
by taking the constant like this. And the example of uh, uh, this psi is as follows. This is very similar to original form, but the difference is uh, this, this is trace of sigma, and this is sigma. But this is the same symbol, so different origin. And example two is the same as the previous one. And another form, uh, another example is in seven, uh, with the deviatoric stress tensor, sigma star. So then, uh, 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 we additionally assume this, then this form also satisfies uh, these three conditions. And now we take the psi sub one by this and psi two by this. And uh, taking the limit kappa and gamma to zero, then this form uh, becomes this equation. This is just the linear elasticity. So I want to say that uh, our, uh, our, our model is uh, covered the uh, nonlinear model, generalized the linear elastic model. So maybe no time, so I'd like to skip this one. So uh, last, uh, to close my talk, I mentioned about the future works and the ongoing works. Today, I will show you the two topics, and one is inverse crack problems, and one is crack problems, nonlinear elasticity. In the first part, also we showed some form theoretical formula to deconstruct the crack. The crack. Uh, but of course, I'm interested in the new numerical testing for this formula. So now, in collaboration with Professor Ikehata and Professor Shiltanen and uh, Dr. Andreas Hauptmann, who is now in London. So uh, we, we, we consider the numerical test and check the performance of our formula. So maybe in near future, we can report uh, some results. So, and the next, so applying the enclosure method with Kelvin transforms is very uh, good technique, I think, because uh, it's possible to reconstruct the uh, Further information than convex hollow and unknown obstacle. So we want to apply the, this method to other problems. And in the second part, so also I'm interested in the asymptotic behavior of the solution here, the crack tip in, non, in this model. This is a little bit tough problem for me. And also, we also consider, uh, we want to consider the dynamic crack problems. Uh, in the case of inverse problems, Professor Ikehata already shown the, the, uh, the time domain enclosure method. So this is constructed. So, but I want to apply the, the time domain enclosure method to the dynamic crack problem. And also in the direct problem, uh, we want to consider this type of problems. And uh, my final target is uh, applied to earthquakes. So that is thank you for attention.